Excuse me while I read my tarot. Hey, this is Amber, and I'm the maiden of Modern Musings, Conversations with the Maiden, Mother, and Crone. And we are here this new year with you, and we are reading a tarot spread for you guys. Created by us. Yes, Created this- by us. And we each have our own part in this spread. Now, my part, the maiden part, is what's coming in the future. Hi there, I'm Kristen, the mother of Modern Musings. And I am reading The Thing That Needs to be Nurtured. And I'm Cindy, the crone. And my card will reveal the wisdom that needs to be gained. So sit back, we're going to pull some cards for you and share with you what the new year has coming for you. Okay, so I have been shuffling my deck here and putting my energy into it. And when I shuffle my deck, I like to cleanse it by thinking of images of earth, air, fire, and water and put my energy into the deck So I have drawn my card for the deck. Oh, and I do want to point out that we are using three different decks. Mm -hmm. So we don't get the same card. And the card that I... No, we might get the same. same Well, we could get... Yeah, sorry. We could get the same card. Now, my card that I drew right here on top is the Page of Swords. And the Page of Swords is a single young man or woman standing with his sword pointing upwards towards the sky. It represents, I drew it upright, so it represents new ideas, curiosity, thirst for knowledge, and ways, new ways to communicate. So what we have looking forward this new year new ideas of course lots of new episodes uh, yeah lots of new episodes coming a new season and we also have something exciting cooking in the works that i'm not going to talk about but uh i'm just going to throw that out there for a little hint at what is to come in the future Uh, yeah it's a teaser and that's also for our listeners and as well, is that right? Yeah, it's for everybody, of course. It's uh, definitely for our listeners. Um, of course, it's just a pilot project that we have going right now. No, but... I mean the card. You're, oh. You're reading the card not just for us, but for our listeners as yes. well? Yes. yes. Okay. So this card is for everybody. New ideas for everybody. So... What, what I take it to mean as uh, if you are looking, if you're wanting to learn about something or get into a new project coming up, then I say go for it. That's what this card is all about, is diving headfirst into new ideas. What yeah. do y'all think? I, the the page, pages always represent the start of a new um, beginning, and as the Page of Swords it is about communication, obviously, the things that come forth. And so he, this page is ready to bring those new ideas, those new ways to communicate, those new ideas. Plans for the future, plans. Yeah, new goals. That's how modern music actually started, was us just talking about our ideas. Right, right. And so, sharing, so you know, if, speaking it into existence. Yeah, exactly. So if you're thinking in the back of your mind about a project that you want to start, this is the card for you. This means go for that project. Start start talking about it. Start thinking about mm-hmm. it. Start, start share writing it, with the it down. Yes. Share, share it with the, the universe. Put it out there because if you don't put it out there in the universe, then that idea is going to leave you big magic. That idea is going to leave you and go to somebody else. That's true. That's true. That's the niggle, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, listen to the niggle. So yeah, when you have that little niggle, listen to it. Act on it. I like it. Yeah, so Kristen, what's your card? All right, yeah, let me shuffle my cards. So I am also, uh, so Amber, while I'm shuffling, tell me about your deck that you just used. Okay, so I have a brand new deck, and 
This is the first time I'm using this deck. It was kind of a present that I got for myself, a little birthday present that I got for myself. And it is called the Modern Witch Tarot Deck. It's so, really cool looking. Yeah. Yes, it has a lot of female empowered energy. It comes with some bonus cards. And right when you open it up, there is a uh, little message that says, You are a wonderful being full of life and possibilities. Through thi this deck, may you find a path to your best self. Cool. I well, like... We'll like link that. that on our blog. Yes, too. yes. yes. Uh, definitely, like if you are an avid tarot fan and you are looking for just a really great deck, I would definitely say pick this deck up. It is a great part of my collection. Now, I know that I have shared pictures before, and we can link that also. But I am definitely a collector of tarot decks, and this is definitely one of my favorites. Very cool. Very awesome. cool. All right. All right, Miss Kristen, are you ready to draw? I am. So I just shuffled, and um, I love how everyone has, like, a different way that they shuffle or how they um, cut the deck. Sometimes people will just draw the first card on the top. Some people fan them out and pick. And so I was like, you know, just thinking about that <laughs> whenever. Because uh, mm -hmm. that's always been like a discussion with other people who uh, use Oracle cards and tarot cards is what's the right way. And there well, really some people, everybody there has their own right, right way. way. It's your way is the right way. And so I feel like as long as I'm consistent with my method and drawing cards, I won't get confused. Wait, was that, you know, reversed or, you it's, know. It's intention. It's all yeah, about intention. It really is. It really is. So I actually... Just to share with you, I shuffle, I bridge. I don't, I don't shuffle like, uh, like the card cutting where the cards fall. Yeah, into I don't do that. Other. Yeah, I actually like make a bridge with my shuffle, like playing like cards, playing cards. Yes. Yeah, and then I cut it into three layers, and then I stack them back in a different order, and then I flip the card over. Um, the one on top. Yeah, I pick mm -hmm. the one on top, okay. and I flip it horizontal or vertically. Oh, yeah. So that when I pick it up from the bottom, that's the top of the card. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and uh, just to refresh, uh, again, I'm the mother. And so mothers are nurturing and, uh, you know, they are the ones raising the youth and taking care, healing and, and things Pro like that. Propelling that idea that um, started with the page of exactly. swords. Exactly, yes. So uh, to take that in. Uh, I drew the King of Wands in reverse. Wow. So okay. I'm actually really looking forward to um, going over the meaning of the card because wands are a fire element and um, they can create or destroy and um, they are action oriented. Yes. So, uh, and again, it is reversed. So you have a king sitting on his throne and he's holding his wand and he's looking out into the beyond or the future of what he has or what's before him mm -hmm. and um, he has salamander right next to him and um, just so you know I'm using a rider weight uh, you know standard rider weight um, good old trusty uh, I, I, I do enjoy the imagery on those and the symbolism yeah, there's a lot of and symbolism. My, my on deck them. is also a Rider Waite deck. It's just all female yeah. imagery. Yeah. Yeah. And the images are like very, very close to the original. Yeah. Yes. But uh, more of like a modern, like they're wearing mm -hmm. modern clothing. And yeah. Stuff like yeah. They don't have the real bizarre looking faces. <laughs> but this king is, you know, he's sitting on his throne. So the king of wands in reverse is impulsiveness haste you know um having expectations that are um, unrealistic and um being like a tyrant so um when we're looking at like nurturing just to like that doesn't keep, sound very nurturing does i it? know yeah. right but it's something that's within you right that needs to be tended to 
And that, that's a good point. It's it's all of an energy. It is a way of being when you are ruthless or impatient, impulsive. All, those are all um, behaviors that can be very negative. And um, they are things, when you think about like being a mother, a toddler is all of those things. They can be ruthless. They can be impatient. Um, they are irrational because they are still learning how to be uh-huh. a human being. Uh-huh. And so a mother teaches their toddler how to be patient and how to make rational decisions, right? Your child doesn't learn to be rational just when they grow like a beanstalk. Uh-huh. You teach them that, right? So you have to also teach yourself. As you get older, you're... You learn, you know, from other people as well, too, to not be impatient and to be compassionate with people. And I think that, you know, just kind of going back to, like, what we've been discussing all of this time, like, talking, even last episode, we talked about healing the world. You can't heal the world. You need to heal yourself, right? You need to nurture what's within. Um, This time of year is... um, That time when we're all staying inside, it's starting to get really cold in a lot of places, unless you're on the other side of the hemisphere, where it's starting to get really warm. (laughs) Y'all are all out at the beach, but we're inside, you know, trying to stay warm, snuggle up. It gets really dark really early, so sometimes people kind of turn within. So it's a really good time to nurture yourself, do some shadow work, yeah, heal your mind, Look at the past year, things that you could have done differently, learn from that behavior, and nurture for a better, better behavior. Right, right. So that you don't become too impatient or too ruthless. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah, I I agree. And, um, you know, kings are always a sign of leadership. Mm-hmm. So um, that puts you that that means that you have opportunities to be a leader. But um, there's care that you need to take in how you lead. You're not quite because it's reversed. Right. You're not quite the leader that you need to be like you have that creative vision that comes from that page of swords, but you haven't quite developed your sense of style as a leader and you need to nurture your leadership skills. So think about being the support of the people you lead. Um, And sometimes leadership is among friends, not Mm -hmm. necessarily coworkers. Leading by example, leading, um, and Being, don't set unrealistic expectations yes, for yes. leadership. Um, so, so you're, you can, you have the skill at maybe managing other people. You know what the vision is, but you're not leading them. So, um, so learn to communicate because swords are all about communication. Make sure that you are communicating your vision and leading, actually leading the people that you work with in achieving those that vision that you have don't just tell them what to do inspire them and lead them to that thing and and be careful not to be a tyrant don't um disempower people make sure that you are empowering them to be in partnership with you to create this vision that's what i see there yeah very nice, yeah, because like with fire, you can be the fire in the kiln that helps create the make ceramic, the ceramic, or you can be the fire that burns the forest down. Yeah, yeah, don't be the fire that burns the forest down. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I am also using a Rider weight deck. So with this Rider weight deck, I also prefer to shuffle in a standard card shuffle. And um, I bridge the cards so that that helps them to um, 
bend back into their natural position because if you only shuffle and you don't bridge them um, in that manner, they wind up getting curled, and I don't like my cards to get curled. So um, I usually um, think about whatever I'm trying to ask at the time. Um, I'm trying to cleanse these cards a little bit before I ask the question of the cards. Um, and then I will um, cut the deck to the middle, and that is the card that I reveal. So um, I usually flip just that one card over um, with my left hand. I hold the card, and I flip it to the left. And so whether it's upright or down, that's where it started. So um, one last shuffle as I ask my question of my cards. And I have drawn the Four of Swords in reverse. And the Four of Swords um, in the upright position shows a man um, laying on a mat with his sword out on the ground beside him. There are three, sword, three more swords hanging on the wall and a beautiful stained glass window with some religious um, community scenery. And you can see by the man's... Um, position that he's he's got his hands in a prayerful position he's in repose he's relaxing he's in thoughtful repose and this is uh in reverse this is a sign of exhaustion burnout deep contemplation and stagnation uh in the upright position it would have been rest relaxation meditation contemplation which is what it looks like but when you turn it upside down when you get the reverse it's exhaustion it's burnout it's all the negative parts of all that and so that is one of the things um, that you need to get a little wisdom um, and work on is that that you have to take the time to rest and recharge your energy if you are working on a new project, if you have this new idea that's coming from the Page of Swords, you can't work on that project if you're exhausted. You will be depleted. You will not make good choices. And the nurturing part of the King of Wands, it, you know, the energy, the movement, the the all of those things are not going to come if you are exhausted so recharge your energy don't work those long hours give yourself some time to um, heal and just let yourself take that much needed rest because you don't want to crash and burn because crashing and burning will lead to those poor leadership abilities and things like that um, it's telling you to withdraw from your from the external world. Spend some time alone. Do some meditation. Retweet within. Uh, like Kristen was talking about, do some of that shadow work. This is a great time to do that shadow work. You need to do that shadow work because that's where you will get that wisdom to deal with the things that you need to deal with. You need to nurture yourself. You need to nurture your spirit. You need to nurture your body by getting that rest, go to a retreat, um, do a social media detox. You can focus on finding that peace within yourself. Then that will help you. That is the main wisdom that you need to get from this to get through the year. And you can't do everything at once. You can, uh, there's an old saying that you can't ride in all directions at the same time. So rest, Take it easy, relax, de-stress. It's vital that you don't just stay busy all the time. And um, there also can be a, a little bit of stagnation there. So maybe there's not enough um, movement towards your goals and that makes frustration. So that sometimes comes back to rest, take a break, look back at it um, Look at what your um, what your goals are and and let your energy 
begin to flow again before you move forward. Did you have something to add to that, Kristen? Yeah, because you're talking about, you know, like stopping. Um, so with the king uh, in reverse, you know, not being impulsive um, and just feeling Charging like you forward. have to do to fill the space. Sometimes it is good to just put your paintbrush down so you don't mess up your painting. You're going to mud your paint. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, you got to let the paint dry. Before you add more paint onto it, um, because you can make it worse, mm-hmm. you know. Or same thing yes. like when you're cooking, you know. Add some seasonings, let it simmer for a minute, so the seasonings can really like flavor the food before you go. Oh, it needs more, and add more. Right. Um, yeah. You got to stop and let it rest before you move forward. Don't be impulsive. Right, that totally and that makes sense. that's um, one of the things. Um, I, I draw this card frequently because I'm one of those busy people. Uh, one of my Oracle cards is the no card. And um, it, it talks about having a, a don't proceed until you have a 100% congruent yes. So if you are feeling depleted, if you are feeling unsure, if you are feeling uh, unclear, then that is a sign to stop to rest, to reassess, reevaluate, and wait for that 100% congruent yes before you proceed further so that you don't muddy the paint, muddy the water, um, make things worse than they are. Moving forward when it's not the best time. Opening your mouth and saying something, putting your foot in your mouth. Right. Well, but, but, and moving forward with a project when it's not the right time Mm -hmm. causes more damage than waiting. If you wait until it is the right time and wait until your energy is at its peak, then you can get far more done by that slow little bit of waiting. And that is the wisdom of. A, a, a child does things impulsively. A child is in a rush to get things done, but a mature person knows when to wait. If you wait on that bottle of wine until it is fully mature, it's a much better bottle of wine than if you open it when it's two years old. Um, same thing with the bottle of whiskey. Aged whiskey is much better, you know, like a 15 year old bottle versus a 10 year old bottle or whatever. So let it age, let it process rest and gain that strength that comes from that resting. So Kristen, did you have more to add to that or, or Amber? Um, no, I, I think that uh, you really hit the nail on the head there. Like don't uh, take on too much Mm, at once. And You know, we were talking about like a single project. Don't try to do, you know, you get at the beginning of the year with that idea. But if you have, don't try to run with like five different ideas and burn yourself out. Because every year in January, I have like these lofty goals and I have like eight of them. And you want them all to happen right now. I try to do all of the goals all at once. Yes. It's funny. Like we were talking about this just a few episodes ago, right? and, And it's interesting because... The way the cards presented themselves were like green light, yellow light, and then red light. Yeah. yeah. It was like, ooh, we got a new idea coming. We got a new like project. Possibilities. Or maybe something. Well, it's warning us. us not to burn out and on it, this. And then it was like saying, to slow like, down. Don't hey, burn yourself out right at once. Nurture your team. Use your team members, right? Because the king's the leader. Um, it's not just you working on this project. You're leading a group of people. Uh, to do something right. or maybe you're inspiring or maybe you need other help people from other and people you need other people's help you can't be the only one you yeah can't don't be the dictator. like we're a team you know don't do it all at once you yeah. know ask uh other people don't try to take on too much because then you're gonna end up like the you know 
flat on your back well with your sword yeah, don't on try your to, chest right <laughs> don't well, try to raise you know get through all of your goals in january spread it out do a little at a time no, rest and work out all january and be buff by the beginning of february right because your muscles are your team and you will wear them out <laughs> yes you have to rest, rest. Between. Uh-huh. well you you notice like the whole the whole thing of like so many people are at the gym in January and then they're like working out hard and by March the gym's back to being like quiet and everybody's chill. like, Yay, the machines are empty again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but but seriously, that's a great metaphor for it as well. Your your yeah. muscles are your team or whatever and and don't that burn applies team to all out. The, it applies to money as well. Um don't burn through all your money, you know, spend your money wisely, nurture your money. Um, make good plans for your money, be the boss of your money, not the dictator. Determine what your assets are. Right. Not just financial assets. Your end goal. Use it, use it wisely and, and then give, you know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to (laughs) to walk away and know when to run. Um, (laughs) but you know, seriously with your money, you know, you know, you you would know when to spend your money and when to be frugal. It's everything is not going to happen all at once. We're talking about the whole year or maybe longer. And so if we are talking about the whole year, you want to spread that work throughout the year, spread that creative process throughout the year, spread the rest throughout the year. Don't delegate, work. ask yeah. for help. Yes. Don't be flat on your back in December and, and be a good or leader. March. Yeah. yeah, March, right? <laughs> Be a good leader. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I think that's a great reading. Um, it can apply to everyone in lots of different ways. And um, I know I'm certainly going to keep that in mind when I um, start setting my goals or start working towards my goals. I've already started setting my goals. But um, they may change a little as I progress because... Sometimes that's part of that resting and relaxing and reassessing is looking and see Goals what's working. change, people change as they learn Absolutely, and grow. absolutely. So um, from the maiden, Mother and Crone, Amber, Kristen, and Cindy, Happy New Year and good luck to you. Oh, yeah. And uh, definitely continue this conversation Ooh. if you have a spark of an idea that you're wanting to put to good use this coming share year, let us years. know. Share with us. Yeah, we want to hear from you. Yeah. All right. Have a great year. Bye. Bye. Bye.